fairly upsetting. So I'm very, um, <laughs> I want to apologize. Um, so we're just going to start again. And, and now there's somebody at the door. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, I think that's um, Whispering Weaver. Hello. Hi. We just started. Really? Just now? Yeah. Come on. Here. There it is. Okay, so <laughs> Whispering Weaver is joining us. <laughs> you just walked in. Um, please let us know if the sound is working because I don't want to talk for another five minutes again and you guys can't hear us. That would be really upsetting. <laughs> okay, so let's do this again, guys. I'm so sorry. So today I have a very special guest with me and she is sitting right next to me. She is a friend of mine. And this is Lindsay Ragone, who Hi is... Hi, everybody. She's I silently the, met you a few minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> she, is, <laughs> she is the film producer of the Braingasm documentary, and her Kickstarter is ending in three days, and we would like to dedicate the bro this broadcast especially to the Braingasm documentary um, so that you guys can have or did you guys can ask any questions if you might have them before um, if you would like to make a donation for example so that you can clear some things up so we have Lindsay Ragone with us hi and we have Whispering Weaver my fiance <laughs> who just walked in I haven't seen you in a while hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we literally live across the street from Lindsay so we're mm -hmm. really happy that we're um, able to do this broadcast and I see that the sound is working thank you so much guys Yay. for your feedback awesome okay so let's we're get really started sorry about that you guys that was our tests work the test but. was working and the actual broadcast wasn't working but at least we have a second chance so thank you yes and hopefully everyone who is on the other page knows to move over do they I think they will I think they will know because there is a live stream uh, going on which people will be able to see. So I'm going to uh, move the microphone a little closer here. And let us know how sensitive the microphone, the is. microphone is. And I'm going to try to talk a little relax, more relaxed, because I'm not generally that type of person. Okay, so um, <laughs> today I would like, well, I would like to get started with Lindsay, um, like talking to Lindsay and asking her about what is it did you do exactly outside from the ASMR? I know that we just spoke we just about this, this, but we have to do it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so what is it would you do um, outside of creating an ASMR documentary? Outside of the documentary, I work in television and I'm an editor. I um, been, have been doing mainly editing since 2003. I've done a lot of different things, a lot of Mostly reality shows. I did four seasons on Undercover Boss. I've done shows, a lot of HGTV programming like Homes on Homes and Property Virgins and all those kind of type of things. Um, uh, I've even cut sports. I used to actually be an editor for the Raptors. Um, really? That was when I first was an editor because there wasn't a lot of work for an editor at the time. Yeah. And, uh, and they gave me a really hard time because being a woman, and <laughs> they tested me. Like I actually had to go into these meetings where they tested me on basketball knowledge and then I found out that none of the male editors knew anything about basketball. Oh man. But it was like a big deal because I was the first female that they hired in that position. But Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, before I was an editor I was a production manager so I managed a production on a bunch of documentaries, a lot of biographies. We did biographies of um, Bare Naked Ladies and Robert Munch and um, some stuff for A&E about like Brenda Lee and Leslie Gore and Bobby Rydell, like a lot of 50s teen idols, so uh, that's my main background Yeah, okay. as an editor and a production manager. That sounds really interesting, and um, I wonder if anyone has any questions for Lindsay. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to continue asking the questions that I already received before we uh, did this broadcast. Um, so... How did you decide to make a film yourself? Because if you're an editor, then, well, it makes sense to make your own film, but how did you got the idea to start an ASMR documentary? Like, how did you come up with that? I've been planning to do a documentary for over 10 years. Uh, I always knew my first film would be a documentary because it's the genre that I love. And I've had many ideas over the years. Uh, but they were always music related or theater related or something that involved a lot of money because music clearance 
is quite expensive and it's yeah. not necessarily realistic um, for me to have done independently as a first film without a large uh, backing behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never really pursued the ideas that I had because I knew that it wasn't necessarily realistic. And the night that I discovered that ASMR, because I have ASMR, but the night that I actually discovered that it was like a thing, yeah, I decided that that would be my film. Really? Yeah. And when when was that? When you discovered that um, was ASMR? Just after Christmas, uh, 2012. And I was the strange thing was I was doing. I found it like most people do, you know, doing a search on YouTube. That was I wasn't. It's not like I looked for ASMR, but I was technically looking for something that would give me ASMR without knowing what it was. What it was. Yeah. And I typed the word that I typed into YouTube was bead sounds mm -hmm. um, because I I've edited. I actually would get triggered a lot by my work be, as an editor. Uh, I spend a lot of my day watching footage with headphones on. So kind of how people watch ASMR videos now. That's kind of my job. And I remember a few times, I don't know why this has happened more than once, but a few times I've done programs where I had to edit people making jewelry. And they've oh, actually yeah. gone shopping in a bead shop. So there would be trays of different types, like wood beads and glass beads, and they would like put their finger in and, and like <laughs> look around for like the ones that they liked. And that was just something I remembered really liking. So it was, I think it was like 2 in the morning. I was stressed out from work, and I just wanted to relax, and I was like, I'm going to type bead sounds into YouTube. That's random. Mm -hmm. I wonder if something... and. Strangely, there was like a lot of, <laughs> like a lot, <laughs> yeah, of responses. Wow. Um, and then by the end of that night, I was like, oh, weird. There's actually a video of someone just digging in a bowl of beads, and then the little, the right hand side, the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was, it just got kind of stranger. Like I think <laughs> later that night, I watched 20 minutes of somebody playing with a piece of toast, and I didn't know why I was watching it. Like they yeah. were just scraping it. When like, you were just, you just kind of caught yourself, like, wow, I can just keep looking at this yeah yeah uh, so I, I looked it up obviously because I kept noticing yeah the it, ASMR. ASMR and I was like I have no idea what that means I looked it up and yeah no responses. Oh, that's oh. wow uh, I instantly decided that that was gonna be what I wanted to do but at the time because I, I wanted to do it independently I expected it to be a very short 20 minute low budget film and it was just gonna be about these people who make sounds yeah and it wasn't until like it, it progressed over I'd say two two months it took of me kind of planning it before I had actually decided I started watching whisperers and I decided oh well there's people attached to these because I thought it was going to be anonymous because the videos that I was used to watching were the people who didn't show their face oh, okay yeah because uh, it's just because those are my triggers whispering mm -hmm. wasn't a trigger of mine so I didn't watch yeah. the whisper videos uh, and then I started to watch videos where people not blogs but people were just kind of talking about, like, you would have ones where you talk about yourself and a few other people. Just, like, random Just, like, the ramble random ramble videos. videos. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, these people have stories, and that's kind of more interesting than just what they're physically doing. I kind of want it to be about people. Yeah. And then it just, then it's not going to be a short film, and then it... <laughs> yeah, and obviously. Then I met, because of you, I met more people than I had expected to meet. And I was like, well, they're all interesting, and I want <laughs> them all in the film, so... I remember the first time when we actually spoke on Skype, and we spoke for, like two hours, if not longer. I think it was like three. <laughs> it was really long, I remember. Okay, so that's that's really nice. So your your documentary is basically um, progressing. And is there like how where where are you with the documentary um, right now? Like what what did you do or like I know obviously what you did, but the viewers don't know what you did so far. What I've done is I'm trying to think of how to best just where, just where it started. I mean, where it started was a lot of, we were in pre-production for a few months where it was just me meeting people, deciding who I wanted to film and interview. Um, the first few people, actually the first few interviews I did weren't even in person because I had, there's no money for this film. It was just, uh, and I, at the time I hadn't really decided to invest my own money. It was just I was going to make this as independently as possible. Yeah. And so uh, I did this really like over the internet, where people like who were very generous with their time, um, like Maria and Al, um, ASMR requests, uh, would set up. I would kind of talk to them about how I wanted an interview set up. Yeah. And I would describe like this is where your eye line should be in the interview, and then they would put like the computer so that I could talk to them through Skype while they videotaped it. 
and then they would send me the footage. Yeah, so that's that really was cool. So I actually had the, the Kickstarter video that I have up. I had a different video finished in June of last year, mm -hmm. and because things changed so much since then, I ended up scrapping that and starting over. And it's mainly because when you planned the UK, the UK meetup. Oh, I apologize. My cat's gonna be really loud. Okay. She wants attention. Um, when you and Chris planned the UK meetup, and I, I mean, I filmed with you in person and a, a few other small shoots in person, but that was completely unexpected. Um, I don't know how, how much people know about the UK meetup, but you had organized a, a gathering. I think 15 ASM artists showed up. To, yeah. And not necessarily all ASM artists, but people in the community. Yeah. And we were going to film in the Google YouTube studios, and it was last minute. You only... It was, oh, we had two and a half weeks to set that yeah. up, and you were all the way in Canada, and the rest was in Europe, so it was a lot easier. I remember that was very last minute. Last minute, and I didn't have the time from work or the money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> in the end, I, I thought about you it. You still and I was squeeze like, it out. <laughs> I can't not film that. I just can't not film that. So, like, I think I maxed out my credit card and took some time <laughs> off work and went. And just meeting that group of people, that changed the whole film. And those yeah. were, I don't know how we got such amazing people. Like, that group of people is the best group of people. Yeah, it was definitely one of the biggest amazing events um, in my life and a lot from a lot of other people too who joined us yeah. there. It was a really amazing happening. Um, okay, so basically when you did the UK meetup, that's when you decided to, to, to like change, well, it basically the changed direction, the whole film. The, yeah, the direction of the film absolutely changed. The people I was focusing on changed. Um, and I've just kind of, it's, I'm, Letting the film evolve organically, I didn't go into this with a pre-plan saying Act One is going to be this, this and this yeah. is what, and this is going to be what they're going to talk about. I've kind of just been talking to people, and new stories are coming up as they happen, and um, you know, people are meeting and falling in love, and people are making <laughs> friendships, and just all this stuff is happening in real time as I'm filming it. Yeah, and I have no agenda. For, I'm just trying to make it honest and let it evolve. And one of my plans with the film, um, which I think is what separates it from a lot of the news pieces that you've seen, is I don't plan on writing narration. Yeah. So everything else that's come out about ASMR, there has been somebody editorializing what it is, even though I have ASMR. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the broadcasts that we've seen have come from people who have ASMR. Yeah. It's still them you know, writing a script and saying, this is what ASMR is, and this is what it means to people. Well, I don't, I don't want to put my voice in it. I want the people in the film to tell me what ASMR is. And to I'm, tell the story, well, the story, I guess, basically. Yes. And they're telling their story, and it's from their perspective. And people in the film might not have the same perspective, and they might not even describe the sensation the same way, and they might, it might mean something different to them. Some people, it's about helping them sleep, and some people, it's just about the tingles. Yeah. And some people, it's about anxiety. Um, and none of them are wrong. And no, I don't want to say that, I don't, I don't want to write something that defines it because it's it's not really defined. It's only defined by the person. Mm -hmm. So just by putting different people in the film and letting them tell their stories, that's going to explain what ASMR is, I think. Yeah. So people watching it might identify with a different aspect of it. And a different person, maybe. They can relate to a different person in the documentary. Yeah. Which makes it suitable for a lot of people to watch, I think. Yeah, and one thing I'm excited for people to see, like people outside the community, especially people who maybe don't get ASMR and think, you know, you watch the videos and they might seem a little weird. Mm -hmm. What I think will take that away is meeting the people because they yeah. all have a great sense of humor. They're all, <laughs> like, they're some of the funniest, most outgoing people. And I think when audiences see, like, what you're like in real life. Yeah, and, and how the people are together. Um, yeah, and how they're interacting and everybody's having fun. And they're having fun with it. It's not... Um, it's not being, I mean, I don't want to say it's not being taken seriously because it's being taken seriously, but it's also not. It's not like too serious. It's like there is serious. also like a normal, or not even normal, there's like a fun side on it, there's I guess. There's definitely a fun a side. Fun when you aspect. see people like right after they hit, or the stuff that they cut out, yeah. is the best, usually the best part. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so are you planning on doing any, uh, any bloopers after the documentary? I was <laughs> originally going to do that, but. The way I like to tell stories is I actually think bloopers belong um, in the story. Oh, okay. Like, I sometimes, I mean, sometimes they just don't work and you, you put them at the end of the film, but I like seeing the real moments in in the film. That's really nice. So I, I actually have a few scenes that... <laughs> that um, you're going to put into the yeah, actual like documentary. Anyone who was at 
the the second meetup in mm -hmm. the UK. There was a Manchester meetup, and we filmed. It's not out yet. It will actually be out probably in a week. We filmed a collaboration yeah. with I think six or seven ASM artists, mm -hmm. and um, where they were learning how to paint, and it's really great, and it's a great ASMR video. But getting that was kind of hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> and I I do think that's going to be in the film. The wow. the process of mm -hmm getting that made. Wow, that's really uh, that's really amazing. So, well, it, it definitely sounds like, like obviously I've seen the documentary myself a little bit more up close because I was involved in like the different aspects, but I think it's going to be, personally, I think it's going to be a really um, unique documentary. Um, so now the question is, actually before we oh. answer the question, I think we should take an ASMR break. Oh, we're going to take yeah. an ASMR break, guys. Yeah. How? Uh, what do you think I'm about sure. that? Okay, so, so you just I've give got me some stuff for you. I'm gonna start with this because I like it. So I'm gonna be quiet and give it to you. So what this is is it's I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't know how you call it. I'm crafty. Those are my beads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her beads. The thing that she was looking for on YouTube for the first time. Um, so there are like purple beats in here, and I'm just going to play around with them a little because um, this is obviously like an interview with Lindsay, but it's nice to have some relaxing moments <laughs> in the interview. So here we go. I promise you guys that you won't fall asleep. I'll stop right before that. signature. <laughs> I can try to do it. I can try. Oh, and yes, Whispering Weaver is Chris, who is my fiancé, which I've met through the ASMR community. Okay. You'll get that story in the film. <laughs> oh, yeah. The story of... Is that... Yeah? Yeah, that is. I mean, it's not edited yet, but we certainly discussed it on film a lot. Okay, so this is going to be a really silly moment. <laughs> I'm going to try and do the eyebrow wave. There is a story to the eyebrow wave. I was actually calling Chris 
on Skype on my iPod and I was goofing around with my eyebrows <laughs> and he actually watched he actually watched me recording the eyebrow wave <laughs> which I put on my channel so I'm going to try and do it okay I'm just going to move a little closer to the camera <laughs> okay here we go <laughs> Okay, enough eyebrow waving. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen my eyebrow wave? No. <laughs> I'll find a way to work again. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Okay. So let's continue. Um, with the question, and I think we have a few questions on Skype already that I received. Yes. Um, let me give you the most. Um, so we have to look it up somewhere. I'm recording the questions here. Too. Okay, good. Where did you, um, do you remember where the screen is with the, um, the I question? I think it's, sorry guys, we just started whispering here. <laughs> let me take a sip of my water. I never do eating and drinking videos. <laughs> ah, so refreshing. Okay, I just do something. So let's continue with um, the questions and the more serious part. <laughs> so Emma whispers read ASMR, um, asked She's a question. Like one of my favorite people. She was also the there world. with the UK meetup. And she is asking Lindsay, what does ASMR mean to you and how do you feel about ASMR and the community um, now that it's our, oh, <laughs> and then she says now it's our turn to ask the, the questions. <laughs> of course, she's got to start with like a hard one. That is one of the questions that I asked people when I interviewed them. But I left that till near the end because that's a hard question. <laughs> I noticed you even started whispering. Because <laughs> you you set a tone. I know. I know what you mean. I don't want to like. Okay, so um, yeah, what does ASMR mean mean to you? It, did you experience it since uh, childhood already? Yeah, but I don't think I'm like a lot of answers that I've had with that is people would specifically talk about experiences that they've had it and even though I've always had it but it never occurred to me that it wasn't just a normal thing that like it, all, it never occurred to me to say anything about it because I just thought like that's just a thing that you feel sometimes yeah and it just would never have occurred to me to say it out loud because it was just always there I would get it at some scenes in movies and um I, you know you were sitting on a bus or a subway and someone a few seats down from me was doing yeah. something specific. Flipping through a magazine or when headphones are tangled up or something or looking yeah. through their purse. I told someone the story recently that I was on a subway a couple months ago. It was like, it was the craziest thing. This guy had two chocolate bars. Yeah. Two, like not one and two. And they were the kind of chocolate bar with the foil, which you don't really see in stores anymore. Like, cause I love the sound of of someone touching the foil on a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, he had two separate chocolate bars in foil. And he would open one up and pull the foil out, unwrap it, take a bite, and then he wrapped it up, oh. repackaged it, and then went to the second chocolate bar and he kept alternating. It was, I just sat there going, is, is that's he like, serious? Is that's this like, <laughs> wow, that's like a whole ASMR session by itself right yeah, there. And I just kept thinking in my head, is he not gonna? He's not gonna switch chocolate bars again, is he? That's amazing. <laughs> wow. But he did. It's just this thing that's just there. That's crazy. Um. Oh, come, come, look. You're. Um, uh, oh, am I not really loud? Um, before you, before you're caught off. And um, it, it's changed though for me now because now what ASMR means for me, it's uh, more about friendship for mm -hmm. me. Just because when. Like, I've been on a lot of film sets and a lot of documentary productions, and you normally are an outsider, especially working in the world of documentary yeah. or reality television, because you are going to different locations, and you're going to people's homes, and you're watching other people do things. And when we went to that UK meet, I was never for a second treated like 
I was the director of a film. I showed up and I actually didn't get as much footage as I would like to have gotten because I was caught up with hanging out with my new friends. Yeah. And I would just put the camera down and spend the day mm -hmm. sightseeing with you guys and not yeah. film it. Like I took photos, but the kind of photos I would have taken as a tourist. And not yeah, I don't want to film maker. That makes sense. And yeah, th th I never expected that I would have met people that I would have cared so much about. Like I get, if I see someone write something on Facebook and they're having a bad day, I get genuinely concerned. And sometimes it's not even people that I've met. Mm -hmm. It's just people that I may have, you know, exchanged a couple messages with once or twice. But um, I know if I've had a bad day or you know, my cat passed away or something, I'm, I'm getting messages from people that I don't know, and they're making me feel better. Yeah. So it's... Um, it it it's, means, a, like, yeah. a lot of different things, basically. Yeah. Right now. The community is, is part of my life now, even if, like, I stopped filming. It's, yeah. it's not like I'm... Um, it, and it's not... I'm not an outsider making this film. Like, I consider myself part of yeah, well, the community. I mean, I have been in it for a while. I consider you a part of the community, too. Especially because because you've been so like so much involved in a lot of things, that's my personal opinion. Um, that's one of the reasons why I think you're you you're like the right person to make a documentary about yeah. about this and to represent it in that kind of way. That's good. I'm I'm probably the luckiest person in the community because I've met so, so many people <laughs> and I haven't even met them all yet. I had like a list of people. I don't even want to say their names just because I don't yeah. want to tell people someone's going to be in the film and then it doesn't happen. Yeah, but just because like, you never know. I don't know happen. funding or time or yeah. some things just don't work out. But there's people that from day one that I was like, no, I have, that person has to be in this film. And it hasn't happened yet just because of timing and schedule and funding. Um, but it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like five people that I've been speaking with probably for over a year. One, well, especially also, I, I, what was your goal, again, once you um, reach your Kickstarter, because that's going to end in three days, yes. um, but wasn't one of your goals as well to travel to the U.S.? Yes, there's a few locations. Some of them I, I can do even without the Kickstarter because they're not terribly yeah. exotic locations for <laughs> Torontonium, mm -hmm. um, and I do plan on a lot of road tripping and make in making it as inexpensive as possible um but there's also um not just asm artists like it's i've been contacted by experts or people like students who have theories and i would like to speak with those people as well yeah because that's what was uh one of the questions i received as well from one of my viewers uh yesterday already is that someone asked me if you're going to include the scientific part of it yes. because that's something that hasn't been explored yet basically yeah. so that whole path is open so is is that something that you want to incorporate in your uh, film as well absolutely um one thing because i have been asked i know i've been asked do i plan to answer questions about scientifically what this is in the film i don't think in a year's time that's something that will be answered in general even if there's like a, a study that's done or we get one result it's it's a big thing that takes time. Yeah, like it's, it's true. a very new phenomenon. Not a new phenomenon, but it's a newly talked about phenomenon. Yeah. Um, but I want to at least talk, discuss people's theories, because I mean, I think the latest one I heard is that it's seizures, which... Yeah, I, I don't want to say it's not, but... Mini, mini seizures, that was something... I, I don't know what to think about it. I don't you know, know how but, to feel about that. <laughs> I don't know enough. I don't have a, a medical background to say if something like that would be able to happen or not. Yeah. It's probably the same for you. But I definitely have experiments that I want to do in the film mm -hmm. that I don't necessarily want to fully give away uh, because, I, I mean, I don't... Of course, don't do that. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a scientist, so I don't know if you can really get results from what I want to do, but I have situations that I want to put people in and test some stuff. See what happens. Yeah. So with, that's really with scientific excited. help. So... Mm -hmm. Um, a couple different things. I, there's two possibilities. So now that you made everyone enthusiastic with things that um, you're not going to tell us, <laughs> so, um, when when is this? When is your deadline? Like when do you plan on um, publishing this video? When it will when will it be aired? Ideally, it would, I'm aiming for June of next year. June 2015. Because these things do usually take. Uh, four months for editing for a rough cut, and I have the the issue with 
this is even with the Kickstarter funding, it's not, I mean, a film like this would normally have a budget of like a couple hundred thousand dollars. And you have a lot of people who can help you with filming and with filming. like doing like for audio, video and yeah. everything, but you're just like um, but a one-man film crew. Myself, <laughs> and it's, I'm not earning any money off this, so I, it's not like I can say, I'm going to edit this for three months. And yeah and get it done. I have to edit. In your spare time. I have to, yeah, I have to edit during the day at my job and then come home at night and on weekends and do as much of this as I can, even with, yeah. um, I'm, because I'm a contract worker, I don't have like a steady job. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, like the last few jobs that I've taken, they would be like, oh, could you start on this date? And my other job ended here and I've, I've at least been like, why don't I start a week later so that I at least yeah. have a week so that I can go on a road trip and film some people. Yeah. So I'm, it's, um, it's challenging to do this for so little money, yeah. um, especially because I'm, I'm a perfectionist, and I, like in my, you know, I'll say like, oh, I'm just gonna do this little film, and it's gonna be low budget, but I'm not comfortable with low budget quality. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course. I, that I makes want, it a lot diff more difficult. I want it to be good. I yeah. I want it to be look good and sound good, and that makes perfect. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So. Um, now I would really like to talk about something that probably a lot of people, um, a lot of people have been wondering this and have been talking about it, and you can already feel what question is coming up. Question. Of course, <laughs> um, it's why is the film called Braingasm? Exactly. Now that title has been in place since January of 2013, and originally because all of my initial research of ASMR, that is the most common word that came up when people were describing it. Back and, then, yeah, especially. Back then. And at the time, I hadn't even read anything of people saying that that's a sexual term, because it's actually not a sexual term. I, mm -hmm. I'm not saying brain orgasm. I actually cringe when I hear people say brain orgasm. It's, I mean, it's fine in the beginning, because people didn't know how to describe it, and they said that, and it's fine. But I think braingasm is more just quirky. It, and I mean, people, braingasm isn't, doesn't just relate to ASMR. Braingasm is a is a term that's out there for lots of things. Like if you type in braingasm on Twitter, most of the results won't be ASMR. Someone will be like, I just saw this great film. I just had a braingasm. Oh, I just learned something new today. I had a braingasm. Yeah, it's just, and it's, it's just like you're learning new information and it's exciting. And yeah. um, but it is a it was a common word. So I never thought of it as a sexual term. I just thought this is I wanted something short. I wanted one word. I wanted it to describe what the sensation is, which it does. And it kind of sets the tone. And it wasn't until a few months later people started saying, well, why are you naming it after something sexual? Which I, And I'm only hearing that from people within the ASMR community because people outside it have never said that to me. No one's ever assumed my film was about something sexual. When I yeah. talk to people who've never heard of it, they just say, oh, that's fun. Yeah. And I think that the sexual connotations are coming more from people's fear than it is from actuality. Yeah, I think, and I think it's unfortunate because I think they're attaching something sexual with their fear that is, I don't think, there. Um, and I also think, you know, because I have gotten criticism for it, I, I think, because there's a trailer right out right now, and I mean, you can see the footage, you can see the tone of the film, and that it's, you know, it's fun, and there's no mention of it being sexual. <laughs> it's definitely not about orgasm, that's it's for sure. It's definitely not. <laughs> and I specifically, in the trailer, the first two things that you hear is, is, the first thing you hear is actually you talking about a childhood experience, and then the lyrical whispers, whispers talking about a childhood experience. Yeah. And that was very deliberate, so that anyone who doesn't know what ASMR is, the first words that they hear are people talking about it's their childhood. childhood, and that was deliberate. I did initially have a um, a section in the trailer about it not being sexual, and then, like I think a month later after I'd cut it, I went back and listened to it, and it felt very defensive. Mm -hmm. Without, in the film, yes, I will talk about it but in in a three-minute trailer without having time to yeah that's it's almost like nobody short. had said it was sexual I didn't show anything sexual so just all of a sudden saying oh it's not sexual I just attached something sexual to something that it, it wasn't there yeah um but one thing I, I'm a little upset about is I find people without watching the trailer have seen the name and accuse me of sexualizing it where it's not much different from people who see two seconds of a video of someone whispering at the camera and they're like oh that's sexual without asking about what it is and exploring so I would just ask that people who are skeptical about it just have a bit of an open mind, look at the footage, yeah, rather than kind of treating the film the way some people might treat ASMR. Yeah, because I think I don't think anybody wants that. No, no, I I agree with you. Yeah, um, and I do apologize because 
for people that I haven't responded to because I know I've, I get a lot of questions and um, sometimes I do get a bit overwhelmed with my real job. Yeah. And, and because I've gotten the same question and I knew we were doing, like especially since the Kickstarter, I knew we were doing this and we were yeah. going to discuss it. So if anyone's watching and you have messaged me with the that same question, question and I have not responded, I apologize because I knew that I would get the chance to yeah. address it. Oh, okay. So yes, you got a shout out. Shortly. Did you collect some? Um, well, Spring Weaver is uh, sitting right next to me, yes. and he has been collecting um, questions. And while, while he's looking, I'm just gonna hand you something else. Okay. Just just a little ASMR break again. This is a bag that, because I bake as a hobby, and this is what I would if I was to give someone like cookies to take home, I would wrap it in one of those. Oh, someone likes my Canadian accent. Thank you. Looks really nice. Thank you so much for all your nice comments, guys. You guys are really sweet. Honestly, one and a half year ago, I never would have thought that I would be able to film actual sounds in front of someone. Because I'm still kind of still difficult well, for me. Film the, yeah. Um, if anyone has seen the Kickstarter video that I made, you, you will see Elsa making a video, and that was your first time, I think, doing it in it, front of people. And I had a crew that yeah. day. There was like five of us, and you were, yeah, it was it was fun. And it's it's so hard. It was so hard for me to edit that because um, basically when the sounds that she made in that video I provided her with because I basically just handed her my triggers. I was like, here, make this video with um, these crinkly stickers. It was literally the stuff that I would enjoy. Really? Yes. I didn't even know that. So every, when I'm editing it, I would sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to edit this scene today. And then, you know, two seconds in, I'm... Entirely. I'm done. And then I watch it to the end and I haven't made any edits. Doesn't, that's not very functional, or it doesn't, doesn't really work well. The worst footage for me to edit was, I mean, it's only in the trailer for five seconds, not even five seconds, like maybe half a second, is there's a, um, you see, not, not the candy in the beginning that's being unwrapped, but there's a quick shot of like a red candy wrapper, a pink candy wrapper being undone, and that was done by Ellie Silly, Silly Little Tingle <laughs> in Manchester, and that was the only time I've ever gotten ASMR while filming. Really? Like, while being stressed out, holding a camera with headphones, and there's people around me. Because that was really stressful. That and I, yeah, and I but that's crazy. Completely relaxed. Triggered when I was when she was doing because it's my favorite trigger. I think a lot of people know that I like candy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, I know at least. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> that's for sure. Okay, so let me have a look if I if I if we went through all the questions that I got. 
Yeah, so um, so we can... Um, oh, people are being really nice. Thank you, guys. I was really nervous about this. I Me tell, too. <laughs> I should tell people that when you do a Kickstarter campaign, the number one recommendation that Kickstarter gives you is that you put yourself in your video because it... it it helps that people get to know who you are as a person. And I tried to film it, but I don't know how ASMR just do it. I would sit down, I would I would introduce just my name. I would never get past, hi, I'm Lindsay Rigoni. And then I would just hate myself. Yeah. Because I'm awkward and weird in front of the camera and I don't know how <laughs> I admire everybody who can do it. Like it's it's difficult to it's different if you're acting, like if someone gave me a script and said, just read this. Because then you're not yourself, so it's not less you. vulnerable, I guess. Yeah, but just being, I can't. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I just couldn't do it to the point where I would actually put that in my video. Well, I have to say that the I think personally that the Kickstarter trailer came out really good. Oh, um, thank you. A lot of a lot of people seem to, to enjoy it as well. So, I think you definitely did a good job. I mean, I, I spent a year on it. A year. Because I really was nervous about. Yeah. Um, the message that I was mm -hmm. getting across in it, and um, I know I think some people are watching who. Well, we're involved in the film who don't get ASMR, and they would say, "Oh no, not that video." Yeah. Because for someone who's who doesn't get it, some videos. I always think there's levels of ASMR videos, mm -hmm. and what I find some of the media reports have done with ASMR is they'll take the most intimate video and use that yeah, as oh, like, yeah. "This is what ASMR is." Mm -hmm. But people don't usually start at the really, really intimate ones. They start yeah a little more subdued, and you build. You build it to it so you're very comfortable with someone giving you personal attention. Yeah. But the media just goes for the one that might be off-putting for your first video. That's very true. So I was, I was careful about which ones, you who, who was in the trailer and which, what, what, what their tone was, which video I used, so yeah. that it was. I, I just was very aware I sounded Canadian there. <laughs> hey, that's on. okay. You're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, do you have any questions for us? You can uh, you can read them if you want to because okay um, okay so here we go questions let me move back a little <laughs> look at us like all going okay. okay deep ocean of sounds can you tell me more specifically what kind of specialists you are going to interview just some random doctors or maybe scientists actively involved in, let's say, neurological study? I definitely want to speak to people involved in neurological study. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, watch out. Watch out. Oh, never mind. Do you want to sit here? So that, because you're the... the no, little, people want oh, you. Oh, <laughs> they do. They do. Let's be honest. Um, I, I do want to speak to people involved in neurology. Um, I also want to speak to psychotherapists because there is an aspect of ASMR that is, um, I like to call it peer therapy, where... Um, because so many people who have like sleeping disorders or anxiety problems can it's it's helping them and I just want to talk to people who specialize in that type of mm -hmm. thing um, and I do want to talk to sleep specialists just because that is my personal reason for ASMR um, yeah. I know it's written in the my Kickstarter page but uh, I, I suffer from a sleeping disorder that I've had since childhood and ASMR helps me so that's kind of my personal um, cause. Yeah, that well, that makes sense. That I I kind of want to get it there because I figure if it can help someone else with a sleeping problem, then that would be good if I can introduce sure, it. Sure, why not? And second question here from Christopher Carlson: How old is Ilza? <laughs> Me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so when I started making videos, I was 24, and right now I'm 26. But a lot of people think I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, I would love that problem. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, to coexist, I have a question for Lindsay. Mm -hmm. With the success of this documentary, what future plans do you have to further make documentaries about ASMR or ASMR related? Um, I mean, it would be great to have like some kind of web series about yeah. ASMR related. Uh, in general, uh, I would like to I I would like to make documentaries about everything. Like mm -hmm. even while I've been filming this. Uh, because my biggest interest is in theater, I always have. I, I would love to do something involving theater, like the making of a Broadway show. Cool. It's like my ultimate dream. Mm -hmm. 
And Cyclone ASMR question, what do you think the impact of the film will be both for the ASMR community and for those who are skeptical about ASMR? Well, my hopes um, for what it'll be is I, I don't like the fact that so many people are embarrassed about ASMR, about, you know, hiding their computer when people walk in the room <laughs> yeah. or telling their family that they make the videos. That I find yeah. that upsetting because there's really yeah. nothing wrong with to it. To be ashamed of. There's nothing to be ashamed yeah. of. And I would like to make it so that people don't feel ashamed of it. Yeah. Um, I, I know that some people in the film have already talked to their families about it just because of my trailer. Like, they've mm-hmm. showed the family's trailer. And that is like, the you couldn't make me happier. Because that was good. one of your goals. Yeah, it was to just, I, I just want to normalize it. I just want, mm-hmm. And I just want to show people that, like, I want them to like the people in the film mm-hmm. as people. Mm-hmm. And then maybe then... The, like if if maybe someone watches it and they just found out that you know they have a son who makes ASMR videos and then they watch this movie and see perfectly normal teenagers making videos as well then maybe mm. they're not gonna be concerned that their child is doing something they shouldn't be. True, that's very true. That is true. Um, Madalope, question. I have a question for Ilsa. Do you mind telling me how much you pay for your apartment? <laughs> it's exactly what I'm looking for and I'm living in Toronto next year. Oh God. My apartment. We're renting. Yeah, we're renting the apartment. Um, Across the street, no, the first one, when we first got in, it was just over a grand. And now we're, it's like 1400 Yeah. 1450 But as someone who lives in the area, I should just warn people that that's fantastic. Yeah. Like, you can, yeah. in our area, God. that's a steal. Yeah. So. Around $1,400 is, is really good. Or where we live. <laughs> um, in the Netherlands, I would tell myself I would be crazy to rent something like that. Yeah. <laughs> if that we're together and that we can afford it together, yeah. <laughs> but um, alone, one of us would never be able to afford something like that. But uh, if you want to move to Toronto, um, they're building condo after condo after condo yeah. Yeah. after condo. After the condo. whole ASMR community <laughs> worldwide could yeah. live on our street. Everyone yeah, yeah, for sure. could live on this street. There's condos <laughs> everywhere here. Yeah. Um, John Hewling, question: What was your, what does your ASMR playlist include? Mine. Yes, Both yours. Oh, oh, come, come, come here. Oh I, God, my, your, your face is cutting off. I know. <laughs> um. Oh God. Okay. One of my favorite things to watch is um, uh, Whispers Unicorn Tingle Bites. It's like my favorite thing. I love it. She's oh, so amazing. And uh, I watch a lot of the Crinkle series from um, Dimitri Massage ASMR. And um, I love ASMR requests, like her thrifty mm-hmm. series. Um, and there, I mean, there's some people I'll watch. There's so many. There's, so, I mean, <laughs> my list is ridiculous. I think I, I think I'm up to about 200 subscriptions of people that I subscribe to, and I literally watch wow. like almost 200 is actually a, quite a lot because that's. Like because the community has about 1,100 channels at the moment, almost. And some of my favorite ones are the ones that are really, really small. Like yeah, I love seeing I have that too a new lot. video when you're like, oh, yeah. that person's really good. And someone, I mean, actually the people that are in my home are some of my favorite. I, I hate even mentioning names because I want to mention everybody's yeah. name, but like um, I watch a lot of uh, Whispers Red's video, Emma's videos. Um, but she's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, and uh, Lyrical Whispers, like, his voice is really great. Mm-hmm. And Deafening Whisper puts me to sleep at night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's the one I save. I, don't, I try not to listen to him when I'm not yeah, going to bed. Because he's, like, my sleep voice. Yeah. I have, like, d- different purposes. Like, if I have a headache, oh, um, just okay. a whispering guy. Really? He's, like, my headache guy. Because mm-hmm. it was because he had a video about headaches once. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, I just jumped into it. That's really interesting that you have uh, videos that can help you with different things. Because, different things. I have people yeah. Com- You're the first one that, that is actually oh, really? telling me that you have different videos that help with different things. I have, if I That's want, like, just tingles or certain people that I go to. If I yeah. if I want to relax, I have people that I go to. I have them, like, in categories, so I only listen to certain videos. Okay. Going on Someone, uh, ASMR and I, was asking, you know, um, who should I listen to for headaches? Um, so just, just a whisper, whisper guys. Who, just, I don't know what it is. I think... I prefer male voices mm-hmm. in general, but I think the, um, the maybe the quality of his voice, or mm-hmm. his, he's very calm. And I mean, he does have a headache video where he, I think he made a video where he had a headache and he was like rubbing his temples and. Yeah, uh, yeah that's he's cool. That's really cool. I really like him too. 
How about you? Me? Yeah. My favorite... Wh wh okay, my, um... What does your ASMR playlist include? My Maybe ASMR like playlist... In a couple days, I guess. My yeah, ASMR just, like, playlist, um, for me personally, there are a lot of old videos in there, um, which I've had. I, I started that playlist like about, I think, a year ago, if not longer ago, and they're just like I, I use the same videos. Um, I have some videos in there from ASMR Love, which I really like because for me, she is um, very well known about her nice tapping. Like she's really she's really cute. She always talks about her nails, um, like that they don't look good, <laughs> but it's really adorable. Like she is so good at tapping, it's not even funny. And then there is another Dutch um, ASM artist, which is called XO Melissa XO, I think, or OX, I don't, something along those lines. And she is really good in tapping too. Um, you don't see her face, but because of the books that she was tapping on, I have the feeling that she's Dutch because they're Dutch titles. Um, I have um, some videos of different male ASM artists, and um, I've mentioned this before in one of my videos, which is Mr. Head Tingles. I love his massage video to death. Like I listen that to that massage video, and I don't even I don't even over exaggerate. I honestly think I listen to that thing for like 60 times, if not more. <laughs> um, and I have uh, I have a lot of people that are like. Uh, like their their channels are really small, but their videos are so good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there are so many people out there who, in my opinion, um, don't get enough uh, recognition yeah. sometimes. And, um, and I know especially those small channels, like the humble beginnings. Yeah. Those are the the videos that trigger me the most. Basically. And the media is always talking about like, oh, there's a few males as well. But like I'd say 50% of my subscriptions are, are males. males. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I actually think there might even be more males that I'm subscribed to than females because I started mm -hmm. off almost because I just like the mm -hmm. like um like the type of voice like black male ASMR mm -hmm. that tone in his voice is like butter it's yeah, yeah. yeah I know what yeah. you mean and Russell Tingles this is going to be a hard one for you Lindsay but what's your favorite film of all time um it's right here oh, oh you actually I'm going to pull it out not that hard to find it's right here oh wow this and it's autographed by John Carroll Mitchell Wow, Edwig and the Angry Inch. Everybody go watch this movie. It's my favorite film. It's a musical. <laughs> I'm going to see this live in a week on Broadway so with Neil cute. Patrick Harris. I'm with Neil Patrick about Harris. Yes. Wow. In drag is his character. This is like the best That's movie, awesome. you guys. And um, Amal did a video where she talked about movies and she pulled out the same DVD as her number no, one. Oh, really? And that was I instantly like when I it was one of the first ones I watched of hers and I was like, That's crazy. I like that girl. We <laughs> 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 could be friends. How about you? Your favorite My film. favorite mm -hmm. film, um, for me, it changes over time because I always have like these phases that I'm really into action movies yeah. and then I'm really into a like animated movies. But I have to say, like one of my favorite videos that we've seen um, was uh, Frozen. Oh, it's so it. cute. Yeah. Frozen is so cute. And okay, I had a little cute freak out while we were there. <laughs> <laughs> and the other movie that we saw, I mm -hmm. forgot the title of, but that movie was. Um, which one was that called again? That, that they jumped on the train that we saw in the... Oh, it's a recent movie in the yeah. theaters. Um... I forgot the name about it, but it was... Uh... Oh, man. I really don't know. Do you remember? What... No, I can't remember. I'm okay, terrible. So I have, I have a horrible I have memory. A, I have a favorite movie that I can't remember the name of, but I know what it was about. <laughs> and it was like an action movie, um, but very different. Um, yeah. And obviously, I think it's obvious that I like films. <laughs> I think people, I think in the shot you can only see like 50% of my collection, if, if even. And there. there's more over there's there. There's more. Like <laughs> it turns the corner, and then the TV series are in the other room. Mm -hmm. um, but like I'd say, after Hedwig, it's like Singing in the Rain and, oh, and cool. the Harry Potter films, which of course. Um, and like Lord of the Rings, and yeah. so it's like either musical or fantasy. Nice. And if you combine those, someone could just make them like a musical. A musical fantasy. fantasy. Oh my god. There isn't one that I can... Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think why I have all my musicals right here. Musical I mean, I fantasy. I guess you could say Wizard of Oz is a musical oh, fantasy. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Wizard of Oz. Uh, Hades Mage is asking, are you naturally a low soft speaker, or did you train yourself to be this way? And do you speak like this in public? I guess the ultimate ASMR question or for whispers. Uh, that's, that's for me? I, oh, it's I not for me. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, silly me. Do you um, whisper in public and stuff like that? Or? I'm just like <laughs> any other person. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I talk normal. I'm the normal person. But your normal voice, I don't want to say normal voice, but like your everyday voice <laughs> yeah. isn't much different than what I hear from you on camera. It's just maybe you talk For me, it might sound a lot different, but I think you're a better judge of that because it's hard to judge how I sound um, outside of my ASMR videos. Like, I think if I do my ramble videos, I honestly sound the same as I do now, except for I, I talk a little slower, and mm-hmm. obviously I do that on purpose. So I think talking a little slower is, is trained, but if I'm too enthusiastic about something, I still talk pretty fast, like I do right now. <laughs> and I noticed the people that I've, I've filmed with there's like a mix. There's some people that their ASMR voice is drastically different. And then like people like you and um, Maria, I, I could barely hear any difference between her yeah. normal voice, mm-hmm. normal, again, everyday voice, yeah. and her on-camera voice. It's normal. just because she's, it's just because she's a, that's her personality is, yeah. mm-hmm. is warm like that. And it's, mm-hmm. she doesn't have a loud, aggressive voice. Yeah. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. And six best te- question. Where and when can we see the documentary? Uh, that is a very difficult question to answer. Mm-hmm. When I'm hoping that it'll be um, at le- at the least for the backers of the Kickstarter campaign will get the chance to see it before the general public, and I'm hoping they'll be able to see it in June. I can't promise that because again, um, it's just made when I can make it. It's fully independent. Uh, in terms of outside the Kickstarter campaign, it could take a bit longer for that, and um, it will. My my goal is for it to play in a bunch of film festivals, and then it will possibly be available some type of video on demand. Yeah. Cool. I mean, unless I something else happens. Something else. <laughs> but um, right. at the very least, it'll be cool. somewhere video on demand. Okay. And and your goal is to do it to to like to do it in June. Uh, That's my goal, but at least for the um at least for the backers of Kickstarter, it could t- I mean it could take months longer for yeah, it to of course. actually be released. But uh, I had decided that the whoever backs the Kickstarter, I think, I actually don't remember what level it is. I think it's the $25 level. Mm-hmm. They get to screen it whenever whenever the first screening is. So yeah. if mm-hmm. I decide to rent a theater in Toronto and have a premiere and just have you guys and I'm like, I'm coming with you. And you're coming. Yeah. If, that's, cool. if that's the first public screening, then whoever donates to Kickstarter at that level will also see it then. Cool. Yeah. I will, that will be organized so that that's simultaneous. So awesome. they'll okay. get to experience the premiere with us. I mean, it could be cool. months after that that everyone else gets to see it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Lynn Thomas asks, are there any A smartest from YouTube in the documentary? And yes. A yes. lot. Okay. Let a me, lot of them. Let me see. So there's YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, Maria Gentle Whispering. Mm-hmm. Uh, ASMR requests. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. Okay. I'm going to start with the UK people because I'll yeah, try to remember because them because I can kind of count them. Emma Whispers Red. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie the Lyrical Whispers, David Deeply Relaxing, Tom ASMR Machine, uh, James the Deafening Whisper, Emma Aurora Whispers, Shola who's Charming ASMR. Um, oh my God, who have I not named? Um, um, Amanda Whispers. Amanda Whisper Sparkle and Darren, Darren the Scottish Whisper. Whisper. Brad Robo, um, who I realized. Um, just sorry, I would say Robo, even though it's Robo. clearly spelled <laughs> Robo. Clearly, um, uh, uh, is Fred. Fred AS, uh, ASMR Gaines. I want to say Whisper Mister, but it's ASMR Gaines. Um, I'm trying to think. There are more. Ellie Silly Little Tingles. How could I forget her? Because I love her. Tom ASMR Machine. Yeah. Um, visual I, sounds. Visual sounds. I got a, a little. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and she's just lovely. There's like oh no, there's more people. Um, I wish I had like my photo of the of yeah. the people. Oh, Danny Docile. How yeah. In the world does someone forget Danny Docile? <laughs> I think you. I think you basically you pretty much covered everyone and, in the. And that's just UK, right? That's so just the UK. That's just UK. Not there are several Europe. more people that I have, I have scheduled filming. There's yeah. actually some popular people cool. that I think the audience will be very happy to see, and I don't want to. I just don't want to promise it until yeah, oh, I have film in the can. That makes. Well, I guess um, they'll have to see it. When it comes they'll have out. to. They'll have to wait and see. Yeah. And um, for people who donate to Kickstarter, mm-hmm. there are going to be. Um, special updates that won't necessarily be made public, so mm-hmm. they'll get to see some preview videos and yeah, um, photographs and, of shoots, so they'll know a little bit more. And uh, Evie Whispers and... Uh, oh my god, yeah. Evie Whispers, Lily Kelly. Whispers, and Kelly Whispers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, and there's some... There's. I don't want to... <laughs> you, you probably can't stand it, but you can't come because up with all of them Because there's like right two people in in the UK that I'm missing. <laughs> there are. There's really... I'm pretty sure there's two. Okay. You got Charlie already? Sorry, you guys. Yeah, Charlie. You already said Charlie, didn't you? 
and I'm probably missing people that aren't in the UK. And I mean, did I say everybody? There's also people who aren't ASMR artists, but mm -hmm. yeah. that are in it as well. Yeah. Well, the answer obviously is yes. They're going yes, to be there's a lot of ASMR artists, artists because cool. the ASMR artists um, basically tell the story of the documentary. Okay. So what's the next? Oh, I see Edie Whispers is here. Yeah, yeah. she's here too. And Courtney Whispering, Lizzie, Ilsa, how did you find the ASMR community? I found it by searching makeup tutorials. I found ASMR by not being able to sleep and typing in relaxing voices on YouTube. On the uh, in in February 2011, and then I found a video of Whisper Crystal. And that was the first ASMR video I found with the actual word ASMR in it. And that made me, um, that was the first video I watched. It Whisper was just Crystal. audio. Yeah, Whisper I Crystal. I miss Whisper Crystal. Yeah, me too. I think a lot of us do. Yeah, I think so too. Um, okay, and to coexist, regarding the documentary, I assume you focus a large amount of it on the YouTube community. Do you know... It's broke. Oh, oh no, I think we're, it's, it's reasonable. Okay. We had a warning, but it was in Dutch. So yeah. oh, I, 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 I was so surprised. I didn't I know, know what was going on. Okay, um, so the connection was broken. There's, yeah, the people have had, I've heard a lot of ideas that people want to take ASMR to different levels, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I want to speak for them, but yes, there are okay. people out there who want to do other things with ASMR outside YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Six best, best tip. Question: The documentary can be translated or subtitled in Spanish. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> if you can uh, find someone to do that. I guess. Yeah, it's that's something that costs money. It's it because every language that you subtitle it in, you, I mean, you have to hire somebody to do the subtitling. So, yeah. ideally, yes, I'd yeah. like to say yes. But uh, I'm I am Canadian, so our main languages here are English and French. So I would assume that the my first priority if I was going to um, have it translated would be French, just because it's a Canadian film. Yeah. Um, Spanish would probably be high up on the list, but it kind of depends on if I can get further funding in order to get it subtitled. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And DJ Rocks is asking, are there going to be any more live streams? I guess that depends on me. <laughs> um, if you guys enjoy the live stream, I have to be honest, I'm a complete noob when it comes down to live streaming. Um, we tried it earlier this evening before we started the broadcast and the sound wasn't working. So I might have to ask Lindsay um, where to buy the microphone that she has um, so that I can actually do some live streaming myself because currently we're recording with her microphone and with her webcam. Um, so yeah, when it's up to me, I would like to do some more live streams, but I would definitely want to have some, something while you're saying that, so you can. I would definitely want to have some more topics and uh, things that I would be able to do, and also when I'm settled in to my apartment a little, um, because <laughs> before I got here, they delivered um, my IKEA furniture, so my whole house is filled with boxes. <laughs> so I right. want to settle in a little. So we just. We still have to put the furniture together. So I have some stickers here that um, it's it says chipboard. Clip. Oh, no, it is chip. Chip. Yeah. Chipboard. Those embellishments. My, my um, scrapbooking embellishments. embellishments. That would have totally been humili humiliating if I would try to say that. I had no idea what it said. But anyways, these stickers <laughs> say dog. Cute. Best friend, <laughs> rough, wolf, dogs, play, wolf, and I love dogs, which is true. <laughs> cool, someone says that someone will make a Japanese subtitle. That was nice. That's that's crazy. <laughs> 
So if you have any other questions for Lindsay about the ASMR um, documentary, I would really like to ask you um, to answer or to, to ask them now because it's about 8.30 and I think in about 15 minutes um, we're going to wrap up the broadcast since we started 15 minutes later as well because we, uh, we weren't able to make the microphone work. And I know I saw a lot of questions kind of go through our stream. Uh, it might be hard for us to go back and find them. So if you have a question, if you just could please retype it in for us. Oh, that yeah. That would be great. That would be really good. I'm glad you like plastic. Someone said, well, there'll be a lot of French ASM artists. I actually haven't met a French. I can tell you that uh -huh. the French Whisperer is a, is a guy who has an amazing voice. It's like really low. Um, and he has someone on his recommended um, site panel. Um, and that person is also French and he is from Quebec. And he actually has all the recommended channels on the right side uh, from mm -hmm. Quebec. So mm -hmm. I can't necessarily say mm -hmm. that they're French, but they speak French. So if French mm -hmm. is a trigger. Mm -hmm. You should just type in um, ASMR Quebec. And you'll be able to find it. I know uh, one popular ASMR artist, um, Amandine Lelou ASMR. As Amand well. Amandine Lelou. Lelou. She's really, really. I love her videos. And there are plenty of other people who are French who make um, uh, ASMR videos. But the best way to find them is honestly to just type in um, ASMR. French or ASMR Quebec, and you'll be able to find them. So I see um, two coexist said, how happy are you about the outcome of Kickstarter and this YouTube session? Well, the outcome of Kickstarter, I don't know yet, because there's um, three days. Three left. days. It'll end Saturday night. Uh, I know if we don't meet the goal, we don't get any of the funding. Um, and if that happens, I, I still want to complete the film. It'll just take me a lot longer, yeah. because obviously at the, I mean, I spent, I've been working on this a year and a half so far, mm -hmm. and it's like I save a little bit of money, and then I go and film with one person, and then I have to wait and save mm -hmm. up some more money, and then I can do one more shoot, because I have to rent microphones, and um, if I do any traveling, there's travel and hotel, and yeah. um, and I've been doing it as cheaply as possible. Like, mm -hmm. you guys know I've been, yeah. and normally, yeah. every other film I've worked on, there's a director, a camera yeah. person, an audio person, yeah. and a PA to get people to sign I've hired just, a lot of people and equipment. Just me. Like, mm -hmm. except for the one day on YouTube, mm -hmm. I've, did you hire two, that I hired yeah, a couple yeah. guys to help me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At YouTube Studios? Just been me. So, mm -hmm. it's good. I, I also, someone asked, someone also asked if the, um, if the live stream is going to be viewable later down the road, because the person's internet connection is not good mm -hmm. and I can tell you yes it's going to be recorded it is recording right now and it will be available on YouTube um, after the broadcast I think like half an hour to an hour after the broadcast cool. um, someone said um, what other links or ways do you have to for us to donate uh, right now it's just through Kickstarter when the Kickstarter ends whether or not it's successful I will have a PayPal account set up and I'm going to maintain the rewards, so if okay, you, cool. I don't know, it, it'll be a little more challenging because Kickstarter right now, if you yeah. donate mm -hmm. at a level, they just, you, you're put into a category and I can send you the rewards, so if you do donate through PayPal later, just send me a message and let me know what you donated so that I know yeah. how to contact you and actually send mm -hmm. you whatever I need to send you. Yeah. Um, where would you like to see <laughs> Maria. <laughs> I'm glad you got tingles, Maria. <laughs> Uh, where would you like to see the ASMR community in 5, 10, 15 years? I'd like to see it, like, not even be, um, like, uh, not even be something we have to discuss. Like, it's just like, oh, there's ASMR. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it's, i just like to see it part of normal culture. Me too. Like, like how, how, how there was a point that not a lot of people knew about yoga, and then all of a sudden it blew up, and everyone was like, oh, you do <laughs> yoga too? Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty good example. I remember when we first, they first started making bagel shops. Bagel, bagel shops. And it was like, <laughs> oh, look at this new bread that everybody's eating. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now it's like, bread with a hole in it? That's so yeah. weird. Yeah, it was yeah. like, I just remember when I was young, it was like a thing. Like, they opened a bagel shop in Toronto. <laughs> That's so will be the next bagel shop. Who will be the next bagel? <laughs> Who will be the next ASMR artist? Yeah. 
Um, I actually got tingles from you. From me? Yeah, because you were talking so soft, <laughs> and I was like, I have to stay focused. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not usually someone who can induce tingles because I'm but if you loud talk, Italian. But if you talk like that, no, you're no, you're not that loud. I um, feel like I, I know mean, I talk too fast for a lot of people. Said that people. they like your voice. Fast, oh, but yeah, fast is do. is something is still is a lot different than talking loud. Like you, like I've been to Italy and I've heard a lot of Italians that were a lot louder than you. I can tell you that. Um, so I think I think you're okay. <laughs> Shh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Edge of ASMR says, are there any more openings for interviews for the documentary? I want my voice heard. There there are openings. It's kind of depends on location. I don't have the budget at this point to really do a lot of traveling. I have specific locations for the people that I've already scheduled. Um, a few U.S. locations and possibly one more trip to the U.K. Um, but I am going to be also conducting, there will be sections of the film where there's going to be audio only interviews being done where you're just going to hear the voices of people. They're going to be a little more anonymous. Some some yeah. will, some won't. Some, um, but, it, but that is a possibility. So um, send me a message if you're interested in that because I'm going to be trying to start those in a couple months. Um, Brittany ASMR mm -hmm. um, also told me that she would like to be in Great. a documentary. I love her. She just did a candy video. Her role plays are so amazing. Oh, they're so, her wigs and everything. Yeah. But her new video, she's, so, she, I've never liked tapping and scratching. Why? Well, it's a new trigger for me. It wasn't, mm -hmm. I never, didn't understand it when I first started watching yeah. the video. And mm -hmm. she had a box and she just scraped the box for like the first few minutes and that was like the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's, just, it's a new trigger for me yeah. so I get excited when it happens. Okay, so, um, I don't have my glasses on so I'm just Oh, seeing the ones that okay. I can kind of see. see. Um, you can scroll up a little bit because I think I saw a question. Anyone? No. 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 Okay, never mind. We got those already. I'm Serious face. You, were you thought I was British? No, I can't <laughs> even do a British accent. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm not going to make a fool out of myself. <laughs> can I hear some insight on what you would hope? for the impact of ASMR could have on mental and psychological health. I mean, so many people use it already to, to treat their anxiety. I don't want to say treat, but um, well, just to help deal with it. Like, yeah, to that. help cope with the anxiety, I think. Um, yeah, I think. It would be good if uh, maybe professionals experimented with it a little yeah. bit. Um, just maybe suggested. Like, I'm not saying necessarily have someone give ASMR treatments for it, mm -hmm. but maybe at least be aware enough to, like if you have a patient and they're feeling them out, like maybe this is something you might want to look at in mm -hmm. addition to the, instead of just going straight to medication. Yeah, like if someone said that some doctors are even recommending it, which is a yeah, surprise to me. Um, I've actually heard someone saying today, um, and, and this is, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but I just want to share it. There was someone who thought that um, ASMR uh, videos, because it helps a lot of people with anxiety, like there is a large group um, on like on YouTube who watches ASMR videos so that it can calm them down. And they actually, this person actually thought that it might be possible that the group who um, experiences anxiety, that you uh, make more dopamine, basically, yeah. and that um, because of that, you're um, easier to trigger like by ASMR, so someone thought that there might be a correlation between mm -hmm. the dopamine because you experience anxiety and the ASMR, mm -hmm. and I, I actually thought that was really interesting. Yeah, a lot of people are asking what the science is behind yeah. it, but... It's, it's all speculating. Yeah, right now yeah. it's all speculation. Yeah. Um, there is really not. One thing I wanted to take a minute to talk about is one of the the reward at the Kickstarter that I'm yeah, the really rewards. excited about. There's a lot of different rewards when you don't rewards when you donate. But the one I'm excited about is um, just at the fifteen dollar level, and that's I was people have been making ASMR videos specifically for this Kickstarter campaign, and they're not going to be seen anywhere else. And I've I've got some really great ones, so I just kind of want to go through kind of what I've got. Okay. Um, Whispers Unicorn did a great um, reading video. She reads a, a, a children's story. Um, Oh, who's this one? I don't have everybody's names in them. I have a spa role play. Um, I have a... Sorry, I'm just going to note so I can just double check who that is because I haven't written their name in this one yet. Oh, that's from... Um, um, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Twitter name. I'll come back to that one. I have videos from ASMR Angel, ASMR Machine, Brittany ASMR, um, Donna, ASMR. Donna ASMR, Heather Feather, Hushed Life ASMR, Karen, Safe Whispery Place. Um, I really wish I was wearing my glasses. Meridian ASMR, <laughs> River Whispers, Scottish Whispers. Scottish Whispers is hilarious because he did a, a makeup bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You um, told me. What's in my makeup bag? And he just took um, Amanda Whisper Freckles' makeup bag and oh, went through yeah. it. And it's like brilliant because mm -hmm. he's like exploring, like, why is mascara shaped this way? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really great. It's really good. Um, Very clever. Um, whisper... whisper Sparkles. I'm. Whisper Sparkles ASMR, yes. Whispers Red ASMR, ASMR Smart in, in my, my life. life, and the ASMR Smart. Nerd. And I still need to make um, a video as well. Yes. But if you donate, um, yeah, if you donate, um, those videos will become accessible um, at the end of the Kickstarter, if I'm not mistaken. It'll be about a month after the Kickstarter okay. ends, because we cool. have to uh, obviously have them all uploaded. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so, sorry, my phone is buzzing. I'll try to stop that. I don't know how loud <laughs> that is on the microphone. Um, Oh, Maria says, I think animals have ASMR, Oh, too. I totally I think, think so. AS, uh, animals have ASMR. If we look at our tiny little puppy, um, it's actually really funny because sometimes she goes crazy, and then she goes, like, running through the house like a crazy dog. Um, and then once you, when you hold her and you grab her, her scalp and you go like this, and she's all like... And she really likes it. It's like a tiny little scalp massage for the little puppy. I actually plan on filming animals. Oh, oh yeah, cool. yeah, and yeah, you can you feel do. more puppy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you mentioned once. I think we were talking, and you're like, "Oh, you should film my hamster." And yeah. I was like, "I already did when you yeah. left the room." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so the funny. moment you left the room, I had the camera like right at the hamster. That's funny. <laughs> Just because. Why not? Just because you can. It's there. It's cute. <laughs> um, uh, do we like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yes, I'm a little obsessed with it. So my answer is yes. I I got into it and um. Because of that, I got, I did back then. Like honestly, this was like when I was 13, 14. Um, but back then, I used to watch Charmed, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and The Ghost Whisperer. Those were the three things that I always used to watch. I have to say that I like uh, Buffy over um... Charmed. No, oh. not over Charmed. The Ghost Whisperer. No, that vampire series, which is just. So yeah, Twilight Diaries? Twilight? Yes, no. Twilight. The oh, Twilight God. series. I don't think you can See, compare. Because Buffy's no. so badass. Yeah, and Buffy's compared badass. to they make vampires look really like glittery and but you know what I mean. Also <laughs> I don't even like comparing them because I am gonna go on a rant here. Yeah. Because you've got Bella Swan who all right. she cares about is, oh no, I'm gonna my life is over if this guy doesn't love me. Yeah. And then you've got exactly. Buffy who's like Exactly. Yeah, yes. exactly. I, I really like. That's the way vampires should be. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I don't I don't like the female role model ness of the <laughs> Twilight series. No, I'm yeah. not. I mean, I, I still when I first I read it and obviously yeah. I read it more than once because I'm a nerd that way. But uh, just comparatively, when you read something like Harry Potter and it's full of strong female characters, like mm -hmm. just every one of them. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. but, you know. I'm going on a total rant here. Oh my god! If you, <laughs> that's okay. I shouldn't start talking about Harry Potter. That'll be the rest of the night. Will there be a DVD of the documentary available? Shinobi Whispers. Uh, possibly. For, for now, I'm just planning on um, video on demand. At some point, uh, we'll see later down the road how that goes. If there's cool. a demand for it, then yeah, I'll look into physical DVDs. I don't know how much people want a physical mm -hmm. copy nowadays. Well, I have to be honest that a lot of people have been requesting me to actually make a or DVDs and um, CDs. CDs. And stuff like like that. so, for some reason, a lot of people seem to um, be wanting to have those. But it makes sense to go online first because that's most accessible to a lot of people, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess you just have to uh, do a short survey to see what the and it might will be. It, yeah, it might be it's on video demand for a while and then a DVD comes out because yeah. I'm requested it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've had sense. I've had DVDs from uh, other smaller documentaries that I've seen, mm -hmm. and you know you you can write and then you'll just it's not an official DVD, but you send the money and they send you and it doesn't even have a case or anything. It's oh, just I like see. in a sleeve, <laughs> like yeah. they just yeah. made a DVD for you. So mm -hmm. I mean I could always do that, but cool. 
my husband actually custom made a cover for a film that he really? loved that came like that. Like it's a very very small documentary, and he loved it so much that he had an artist a friend, she who did our uh, bring us on well, ASMR logo on our tote bags and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, she designed like a custom oh, cover just so we had a. That's so cute. So we're like the only people who probably have a proper DVD of this little independent film. <laughs> Okay, so I think I think that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, do we have any other questions? While you're saying bye, you can play with that. Yeah. Oh yeah, here she goes. <laughs> Those are for cupcake decorations. Cupcake. And I just want to take a moment just to thank anyone who's donated to Kickstarter. Thank you so much. It like even a dollar helps. It raises the profile of the campaign on Kickstarter, and the, just the fact that strangers are are going out there and pledging it's really it, it's so amazing. And I just love this community, and thank you guys so much. So I would like to um, thank you very much for um, joining us in the live broadcast um, today. Um, I'm happy that we were able to fix the sound. Um, I just want to say goodbye already, or at least see you later. Um, yeah, and um, we would really appreciate it if you would, um, if you can, if you if you are able, and if you want to make a donation for the Kickstarter. Only three days left, and um, I really want to thank you for oh, joining thank us. You. Thank like the people here have been so nice. I've been, yeah. I've watched a lot of live feeds and. There's always one or two like no little... people who are there just to stir stuff up, but thank you guys for being like yes, the nicest, great crowd. greatest crowd. <laughs> it's really sweet. So um, yeah, I'm just going to uh, make a little bit more sounds with this for just a few minutes, and um, after that, um, I'll see you in the next video. Magical hugs from Hogwarts. <laughs> Timma loves wolves. I guess somewhere. So for everyone who tuned into the broadcast halfway or maybe a little later, um, this is going to be published on my YouTube channel. So don't worry if you missed um, a, a part of it. It's going to be available on my YouTube channel soon. Someone who would like to be interviewed for your documentary. With asparagus and syndrome. Yeah, I'll have to go back and read. They're coming in really fast, you guys, so if we don't um, respond to every comment here, they're going by. Okay, guys, so we'll see you later, and um, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye. The awkward moment when you look for the key. I know. I know, right? Why is it? Okay. Really upsetting. So I'm very, um, (laughs) I want to apologize. Um, so we're just going to start again. And, and now there's somebody at the door. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, I think that's um, Whispering Weaver. Hello. Hi. We just started. Really? Just now? Yeah. Come on in. Where's the camera? There it is. 
Okay, so <laughs> Whispering Weaver is joining us. <laughs> you just walked in. Um, please let us know if the sound is working because I don't want to talk for another five minutes again and you guys can't hear us. That would be really upsetting. <laughs> okay, so let's do this again, guys. I'm so sorry. So today I have a very special guest with me and she is sitting right next to me. She is a friend of mine. And this is Lindsay Ragone, who is... Hi, everybody. She's I silently met you a few minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> she, is, she is the film producer of the Braingasm documentary, and her Kickstarter is ending in three days, and we would like to dedicate the bro this broadcast especially to the Braingasm documentary um, so that you guys can have or did you guys can ask any questions if you might have them before um, if you would like to make a donation for example so that you can clear some things up so we have Hello. Lindsay Ragone with us hi and we have Whispering Weaver my fiance <laughs> who just walked in I haven't seen you in a while hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we literally live across the street from Lindsay so we're mm -hmm. really happy that we're um, able to do this broadcast and I see that the sound is working thank you so much guys Yay. for your feedback awesome okay so let's we're get really started about that you guys that was our tests work the test but. was working and the actual broadcast wasn't working but at least we have a second chance so thank you yes and hopefully everyone who is on the other page knows to move over do they I think they will I think they will know because there is a live stream uh, going on which people will be able to see so I'm going to uh, move the microphone a little closer here and let us know how sensitive the microphone, the is. microphone is and I'm gonna try to talk a little relax more relax because I'm not generally that type of person okay so um, today I would like well I would like to get started with Lindsay um, like talking to Lindsay and asking her about what is it did you do exactly outside from the ASMR I know that we just spoke we just about this, this but we have to do it again <laughs> I'm sorry so what is it would you do um, outside of creating an ASMR documentary. Outside of the documentary, I work in television and I'm an editor. I um, been, have been doing mainly editing since 2003. I've done a lot of different things, a lot of mostly reality shows. I did four seasons on Undercover Boss. I've done shows, a lot of HGTV programming like Homes on Homes and Property Virgins and all those kind of type of things. Um, uh, I've even cut sports. I used to actually be an editor for the Raptors. Um, really? That was when I first was an editor because there wasn't a lot of work for an editor at the time. Yeah. And, uh, and they gave me a really hard time because being a woman, and <laughs> they tested me. Like I actually had to go into these meetings where they tested me on basketball knowledge, and then I found out that none of the male editors knew anything about basketball. Oh man! But it was like a big deal because I was the first female that they hired in that position. But yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, before I was an editor, I was a production manager, so I managed a production on a bunch of documentaries, a lot of biographies. We did biographies of um, Bare Naked Ladies and Robert Munch and um, some stuff for A&E about like Brenda Lee and Leslie Gore and Bobby Rydell, like a lot of 50s teen idols. So uh, that's my main background Yeah, okay. as an editor and a production manager. That sounds really interesting, and um, I wonder if anyone has any questions for Lindsay. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to continue asking the questions that I already received before we uh, did this broadcast. Um, so, how did you decide to make a film yourself? Because if you're an editor, then, well, it makes sense to make your own film, but how did you got the idea to start an ASMR documentary? Like, how did you come up with that? I've been planning to do a documentary for over 10 years. Uh, I always knew my first film would be a documentary because it's the genre that I love. And I've had many ideas over the years, uh, but they were always music related or theater related or something that involved a lot of money because music clearance is quite expensive and it's yeah. not necessarily realistic um, for me to have done independently as a first film without a large uh, backing behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never really pursued the ideas that I had because I knew that it wasn't necessarily realistic and the night that I discovered that ASMR, because I have ASMR, but the night that I actually discovered that it was like 
a thing, yeah, I decided that that would be my film. Really? Yeah. And when when was that? When you discovered that um, was ASMR? Just after Christmas, uh, 2012. And I was the strange thing was I was doing I found it like most people do you know doing a search on YouTube that was I wasn't it's not like I looked for ASMR but I was technically looking for something that would give me ASMR without knowing what it was what it was yeah and I, I typed the word that I typed into YouTube was bead sounds mm -hmm. um, because I I've edited I actually would get triggered a lot by my work be, as an editor uh, I spend a lot of my day watching footage with headphones on so kind of how people watch ASMR videos now that's kind of my job and I remember a few times, I don't know why this has happened more than once, but a few times I've done programs where I had to edit people making jewelry. And they've oh, actually yeah. gone shopping in a bead shop. So there would be trays of different types, like wood beads and glass beads, and they would like put their finger in and, and like <laughs> look around for like the ones that they liked. And that was just something I remembered really liking. So it was, I think it was like 2 in the morning. I was stressed out from work, and I just wanted to relax. And I was like, I'm going to type bead sounds into YouTube. That's random. Mm -hmm. I wonder if something, and strangely, there was like a lot of, <laughs> like a lot yeah, of responses. Wow. Um, and then by the end of that night, I was like, oh, weird, there's actually a video of someone just digging in a bowl of beads. And then the little, the right-hand side, the rabbit hole, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was, it just got kind of stranger. Like, I think <laughs> later that night, I watched 20 minutes of somebody playing with a piece of toast, and I didn't know why I was watching it. Like, they yeah. were just scraping it. When like, you were just... You just kind of caught yourself like, wow, I can just keep looking at this? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, so I, I looked it up, obviously, because I kept noticing yeah, the it, ASMR. It ASMR, and I was like, I have no idea what that means. I looked it up, and... Yeah? No responses. Oh, that's, that's, wow. Uh, I instantly decided that that was going to be what I wanted to do. But at the time, because I, I wanted to do it independently, I expected it to be a very short, 20-minute, low-budget film and it was just going to be about these people who make sounds yeah and it wasn't until like it, it progressed over I'd say two two months it took of me kind of planning it before I had actually decided I started watching whisperers and I decided oh well there's people attached to these because I thought it was going to be anonymous because the videos that I was used to watching were the people who didn't show their face oh, okay yeah because uh, it's just because those are my triggers whispering mm -hmm. wasn't a trigger of mine so I didn't watch yeah. the whisper videos uh, and then I started to watch videos where people, not blogs, but people were just kind of talking about, like, you would have ones where you talk about yourself and a few other people. Just, like, random Just, like, the ramble random ramble videos. videos. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, these people have stories, and that's kind of more interesting than just what they're physically doing. I kind of want it to be about people. Yeah. And then it just, then it's not going to be a short film, and then it... <laughs> yeah, and obviously. Then I met, because of you, I met more people than I had expected to meet. And I was like, well, they're all interesting, and I want them <laughs> all in the film. So I remember the first time when we actually spoke on Skype, and we spoke for, like, two hours, if not longer. <laughs> I think it was, like, three. <laughs> <laughs> it was really long, I remember. Okay, so that's that's really nice. So your, your documentary is basically um, progressing. And is there... Like how where where are you with the documentary um, right now? Like what what did you do? Or like I know obviously what you did, but the viewers don't know what you did so far. What I've done is I'm trying to think of how to best just where discuss. where it started. I mean where it started was a lot of we were in pre production for a few months where it was just me meeting people, deciding who I wanted to film and interview. Um, the first few people, actually, the first few interviews I did weren't even in person because I had there's no money for this film. It was just. Uh, and I, at the time, I hadn't really decided to invest my own money. It was just I was going to make this as independently as possible. Yeah. And so uh, I did this really, like, over the Internet, where people, like, who were very generous with their time, um, like Maria and Al, um, ASMR Requests, uh, would set up, I would kind of talk to them about how I wanted an interview set up. Yeah. And I would describe, like, this is where your eye line should be in the interview, and then they would put like the computer so that I could talk to them through Skype while they videotaped it, and then they would send me the footage. Yeah, so that's that really was cool. So I actually had the, the Kickstarter video that I have up. I had a different video finished in June of last year, mm -hmm. and because things changed so much since then, I ended up scrapping that and starting over. And it's mainly because when you planned the UK, the UK meetup. Oh, I apologize. My cat's gonna be really loud. Okay. She wants attention. Um, when you and Chris planned the UK meetup. And 
I, I mean, I filmed with you in person and a, a few other small shoots in person, but that was completely unexpected. Um, I don't know how, how much people know about the UK meetup, but you had organized a, a gathering. I think 15 ASM artists showed up. To, yeah. And not necessarily all ASM artists, but people in the community. Yeah. And we were going to film in the Google YouTube studios, and it was last minute. You only... It was, oh, we had two and a half weeks to set that yeah. up, and you were all the way in Canada, and the rest was in Europe, so it was a lot easier. I remember that was very last minute. Last minute, and I didn't have the time from work or the money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> in the end, I, I thought about you it, and I still was like, squeeze it out. <laughs> I can't not film that. I just can't not film that. So, like, I think I maxed out my credit card and took some time <laughs> off work and... Went and just meeting that group of people that changed the whole film. And those yeah. were, I don't know how we got such amazing people. Like that group of people is the best group of people. Yeah, it was definitely one of the biggest amazing events um, in my life and a lot, from a lot of other people too who joined us yeah. there. It was a really amazing happening. Um, okay, so basically when you did the UK meetup, that's when you decided to. to to like change well, it basically the changed direction, the whole film. The, yeah, the direction of the film absolutely changed. The people I was focusing on changed, um, and I've just kind of it's. I'm letting the film evolve organically. I didn't go into this with a pre-plan saying Act One is going to be this, this and this yeah. is what and this is going to be what they're going to talk about. I've kind of just been talking to people, and new stories are coming up as they happen, and. Um, you know, people are meeting and falling in love, and people are making <laughs> friendships, and just all this stuff is happening in real time as I'm filming it. Yeah. And I have no agenda for. I'm just trying to make it honest and let it evolve. And one of my plans with the film, um, which I think is what separates it from a lot of the news pieces that you've seen, is I don't plan on writing narration. Yeah. So everything else that's come out about ASMR, there has been somebody editorializing what it is, even though I have ASMR. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the broadcasts that we've seen have come from people who have ASMR. Yeah. It's still them, you know, writing a script and saying, this is what ASMR is, and this is what it means to people. Well, I don't I don't want to put my voice in it. I want the people in the film to tell me what ASMR is. And to I'm, tell the story, well, the story, I guess, basically. Yes. And they're telling their story, and it's from their perspective. And people in the film might not have the same perspective, and they might not even describe the sensation the same way, and they might it might mean something different to them. Some people, it's about helping them sleep, and some people it's just about the tingles, yeah. and some people it's about anxiety, um, and none of them are wrong. And no, I don't want to say that I don't I don't want to write something that defines it because it's it's not really defined. It's only defined by the person. Mm -hmm. So just by putting different people in the film and letting them tell their stories, that's going to explain what ASMR is, I think. Yeah. So people watching it might identify with a different aspect of it. And a different person, maybe. They can relate to a different person in the documentary, Yeah. which makes it suitable for a lot of people to watch, I think. Yeah, and one thing I'm excited for people to see, like people outside the community, especially people who maybe don't get ASMR and think, you know, you watch the videos and they might seem a little weird. Mm -hmm. What I think will take that away is meeting the people, because... They yeah. all have a great sense of humor. They're all, like, they're some of the funniest, most outgoing people. And I think when audiences see, like, what you're like in real life. Yeah, and, and how the people are together. Um, yeah, and how they're interacting and everybody's having fun. And they're having fun with it. It's not, um, it's not being, I mean, I don't want to say it's not being taken seriously because it's being taken seriously, but it's also not. It's not, like, too serious. It's like, there is serious. also, like, a normal... Or not even normal. There's like a fun side on it. I There's guess. definitely There's a fun a side. Fun when you aspect. see people like right after they hit, or the stuff that they cut out, yeah, is the best. Usually the best part. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so are you planning on doing any uh, any bloopers after the documentary? I was originally gonna do that, but the way I like to tell stories is I actually think bloopers belong um, in the story. Yeah, oh, okay. Like I sometimes, I mean, sometimes they just don't work, and you. You put them at the end of the film, but I like seeing the real moments in in the film. That's really nice. So I, I actually have a few scenes that <laughs> that um, you're going to put into the yeah, actual like documentary. Anyone who was at the the second meetup in mm -hmm. the UK, there was a Manchester meetup, and we filmed. It's not out yet. It will actually be out probably in a week. We filmed a collaboration yeah. with I think six or seven ASM artists, mm -hmm. and um, where they were learning how to paint, and it's really great, and it's a great ASMR video. But getting that was kind of hilarious. Yeah. And I, I do think that's going to be in the film, the, wow. the process of mm -hmm. 
getting that made. Wow, that's really uh, that's really amazing. So, well, it, it definitely sounds like like obviously I've seen the documentary myself a little bit more up close because I was involved in like the different aspects. But I think it's going to be personally, I think it's going to be a really um, unique documentary. Um, so now the question is... Actually, before we oh. answer the question, I think we should take an ASMR break. Oh, we're going to take yeah. an ASMR break, guys. Yeah. How, how, what do you think I'm about sure. that? Okay, so, so you just I've give me... some stuff for you. I'm going to start with this because I like it. So I'm going to be quiet and give it to you. So what this is, is it's I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't know how you call it. I'm crafty. Those are my beads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her beads. The thing that she was looking for on YouTube for the first time. Um, so there are like purple beads in here. And I'm just going to play around with them a little. Because um, this is obviously like an interview with Lindsay. But it's nice to have some relaxing moments <laughs> in the interview. So here we go. I promise you guys that you won't fall asleep. I'll stop right before that. start shaking it like crazy. <laughs> no kidding, I won't. <laughs> it kind of kind of sounds like a rum, like a rain to me. Right like that. signature. <laughs> I can try to do it. I can try. Oh, and yes, Whispering Weaver is Chris, who is my fiancé, which I've met through the ASMR community. Okay. You'll get that story in the film. <laughs> oh, yeah. The story of... Is that... Yeah? Yeah, that is. I mean... It's not edited yet, but we certainly discussed it on film a lot, so. Okay. So this is going to be a really silly moment. <laughs> I'm going to try and do the eyebrow wave. There is a story to the eyebrow wave. I was actually calling Chris on Skype on my iPod. And I was goofing around with my eyebrows. <laughs> and he actually watched he actually watched me recording the eyebrow wave, <laughs> which I put on my channel. So I'm going to try and do it, okay? I'm just going to move a little closer to the camera. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, enough eyebrow waving. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen my eyebrow wave? No. <laughs> I'll find a way to work it in. <laughs> <I'm loving> it. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So let's continue. Um, with the question, and I think we have a few questions on Skype already that I received. Yes. Um, let me give you the most. Um, so we have to look it up somewhere. I'm recording the questions here. Too. Okay, good. Where did you, um, do you remember where the screen is mm -hmm. with the, um, the I question? I think it's, sorry guys, we just started whispering here. <laughs> let me take a sip of my water. I never do eating and drinking videos. <laughs> ah, so refreshing. Okay. Can I just do something? So let's continue with um, the questions and the more serious part. <laughs> so Emma whispers read ASMR, um, asked He's a question. Like my favorite people. She was also the there world. with the UK meetup. And she is asking Lindsay, what does ASMR mean to you and how do you feel about ASMR and the community um, now that it's our, oh, <laughs> and then she says, now it's our turn to ask the, the questions. <laughs> of course, she's got to start with like a hard one. That is one of the questions that I asked people when I interviewed them. But I left that till near the end because that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you even start whispering. Because <laughs> you you set a tone. I know. I know what you mean. I don't want to like. Okay. So, um, yeah. What does ASMR mean, mean to you? It, did you experience it since uh, childhood already? Yeah. But I don't think I'm like a lot of answers that I've had with that is people would specifically talk about experiences that they've had it and even though I've always had it but it never occurred to me that it wasn't just a normal thing that like it, all, it never occurred to me to say anything about it because I just thought like that's just a thing that you feel sometimes yeah and it just would never have occurred to me to say it out loud because it was just always there I would get it at some scenes in movies and um I, you know you were sitting on a bus or a subway and someone a few seats down from me was doing yeah. something specific. Flipping through a magazine or when headphones are tangled up or something or looking yeah. through their purse. I told someone the story recently that I was on a subway a couple months ago. It was like, it was crazy.